right, guys. The men's conference that will change the world. Um, man, really, really good to be here. This is actually one of the most interesting uh, uh, intros that I'm going to do because I, you know, have been involved in the scene of social dynamics, sexual dynamics, and all that sort of dating lifestyle forever and worked with some of the best people. And this next guy I haven't met but always heard about and heard about in amazing ways. Um, I, I was talking to some guys privately about it, but it's like the, the industry has such a doubting mentality and this dude over and over and over again, whether it was clients or just uh, videos that you, you would see would prove to be just such an upstanding guy. Now what's interesting about this, he's actually gonna talk to us about business, adventure, uh, life, and living a true lifestyle. And so this is a true uh, kind of parallel to the message that the 21 convention is sending. I'm really happy to have him up here. It's Timothy Mark. Come on up, man. Steal the show. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> Thanks, mate. You, Much man. appreciated. Yeah, yeah. You got cheers. It's it. a good little intro there. Thanks heaps. Um, so guys, yeah, I'm running a little blog right now called freedom, uh, freedombusinessblog.com and uh, also used to, and, and that's all about building a little online business just with your laptop or whatever, uh, and creating a life of freedom, fun, and adventure. And previously to that, I was working for a company called uh, Real Social Dynamics and still a little bit involved in that stuff. So hands up if you have uh, seen some of that stuff, RSD or some of my stuff or whatever it is. Yeah, cool. So a few people in the audience. Um, so a few nights ago, I'm uh, chilling out and went and saw the new Bond film. You've seen the new little Sky film, the Sky Fall. Uh, and I'm um, sitting there, I'm like, all right, it got me thinking after, see I've been doing this or teaching like this personal men's growth movement type stuff for pretty much the last 10 years or so. So it got me thinking, I was sitting there, I'm like, Skyfall, Bonch. I'm like, this is very, uh, I was like, guys in this community, they're very much like mini James Bonds. Now obviously though, we're much more attractive and uh, better dressed and uh, more ripped. Than James Bond himself, but it really did, um, it, it struck a chord with me. I'm sitting there, I've got my little popcorn, I've got my little drink, and you know, damn it, now he's pulling guns out, there's fire, he's like falling off shit, getting back up. I was like, this is very much like our, uh, our little, little community here. And um, the reason why, the reason why uh, I feel like James Bond is very much related to this little community, it's one little thing that while watching, I was halfway through, he might have got run over or something, and uh, I'm thinking, there's one little thing that's missing in most dudes' lives. After 10 years of this, after taking guys out, showing them how to like say hello to girls, and after getting a bunch of guys together and showing them how to build an online business, so I was like, there's one fundamental thing, one little tiny little thing that guys uh, are generally missing in, in their lives and in, in normal society. And that one little thing, the one little thing that I kind of want to discuss and share and talk about today is uh, a quest, okay? And this is the body movement of a quest, by the way. Quest, all right? So every man on this planet, I feel, needs uh, personally, deep down, his own personal quest. And hands up if you, if you sort of feel like you know what your quest's all about. All right, stand up for a second. We'll get everyone standing up. We need a bit... Need a bit more vibe in the room, need a bit more excitement, a bit more energy. Everyone's like after lunch, like, oh, I've eaten Subway and I'm all lying down. So the body movement of a quest is, and this is how it goes. The right foot goes forward first, okay? You might kick a chair or something, but that's okay. Right foot goes forward first, and then the quest, like there's a flex of the right bicep. And you've got to say quest like you mean it, like from deep down, right? So quest, all right? So we'll do it on three, okay? It's good. I know, I know we're all eager here. But we've got, we got to get the quest thing right, okay? You know, James Bond, we're all mini James, that was, that was not James Bond. All right, so on three, we're all going to do our right foot plant. You can do it too, that's all right. I know you're a girl, but it's okay. <laughs> right foot, quest, fle flex, right? So on three, one, two, three. Quest! All right, excellent. Good stuff. Give yourself applause. Have a seat. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, quests. And there's three key important areas of a quest. Three, I guess, distinct little things, toolbox, if you will, that you bring on your quest. So whether you're going out and you're picking up girls, or whether you're creating a little online business, or whatever it is that you're attempting to do and get better at, men's personal growth, all that sort of stuff, these three little tools will help you. So first little tool I want to talk about is 
boldness. Okay, boldness. Entering with boldness. Okay, it's, uh, I first discovered this little principle uh, reading Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power. Hands up if you've read that. Um, that book actually messed me up for a few days purely because it's like pretty dense. I'm like, wow, do I have to be this power focused and power hungry? And this is pretty much the only law that kind of stood out for me, boldness. And uh, entering with boldness means in anything that you're doing, uh, be it business, be it you know, relationships or whatever it is, as a dude, it's your responsibility to be entering that with a certain sense of boldness. Now, do you guys know what boldness feels like? Have you felt boldness before in your own life in certain things that you've been doing? You might have been scared, but you had to step up and do it. Yes or no? Yes? Okay. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, excellent. So, boldness is the first step. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I, uh, I did my back playing golf. I found like, now that I've created a little online business, I'm playing a lot of golf. Okay, so I'm out playing golf and hurt my back. And you'll meet, actually on the golf course, you'll meet a lot of like interesting business people and stuff like that. They're all sort of plugged into the matrix though. And you know, they ask, what do you do? So what do you do with your days? I'm like, oh, well, there's a lot of golf going on, a lot of hanging out with friends and stuff. But anyway, so playing golf, hurt my back, had to go see an osteopath. So I went, went in the osteopath and, you know, cute little reception desk girl. So I'm walking in like, oh, geez, this is all right. Cute little, hello, what's, what's going on? And I thought she was just the receptionist. And she's like, oh, you can go through the room. Go through the room. Turns out, sure enough, hottie receptionist is actually the osteopath. So she's walked in. I'm like, oh, this is all right. And then, uh, so she's like, take your shirt off, please. No problems. All right. And uh, we're going back and forth. A little bit of banter, a little bit of, little bit of just nothing talk. Like, what do you do? Cool. And uh, then she proceeds to do some kind of weird stuff. Uh, osteopath or a merge of like chiropractors and stuff like that. So I had to sit there like under this pillow with my shirt off. She's like, now I'm going to come up behind you with my hands and like put my hands here. I was like, okay, some weird technique. She's going to crack my back or what's going to happen. Puts her hands in and uh, sitting there and, and then proceeds to like sit there. I think she was like channeling en energies or something. Sits there for like what felt like 10 minutes of awkwardness. So I'm like trying to crack jokes and, and she's like, no, shh, shh, you got to be quiet. I'm like, okay. And it's super awkward and weird. But anyway, something happened with these energies. I really like this girl. So I'm like, I'm, I've got to like ask her out or something. I've got to do something here. So talking around, whatever. And uh, then I'm like, okay, so when do you need to see me next? And she's like, oh, I probably need to see you next Friday. I'm like, well, how about tomorrow? She's like, what? I'm like, well, how about tomorrow? We'll go for a drink tomorrow or something. She's like, uh... Oh, I'm like, you got a boyfriend, don't you? You know, preempting, like I could see the, the shift. So, oh, you got a boyfriend, don't you? And she's like, uh, oh no, but we're not really supposed to do this. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'll get another osteo drink tomorrow. She's like, uh, okay, I guess we can do it on the sly. All right. So writes her number down, gives it to me, off we go. And we end up on uh, date times last week, actually. But that whole thing I feel happened because I've trained myself to kind of enter with boldness and if any opportunity arises, and of course I was like, do I ask her out? We just did the weird like energy thing. It's like, do I, do I do that or do I just see her next week or whatever? But the whole mindset shift of boldness definitely, definitely helps. And so that's a little relationship area. That's a couple of weeks ago, that one happened. But let's take like, I'm supposed to be an awesome pickup instructor man boldness thing for a second. So um, one little story that I remember when I was over in Vegas, um, I met up with like a, this, where I had to, I was coaching this like multi-millionaire guy, like it's worth millions of dollars, very, uh, what you would say, alpha, very like, you know, I'm the shit, fuck you, fuck everyone, you know, I'm the man, right? That sort of guy. So I come into this thing and there's no way I can be like, okay, let's go talk to this girl now. You know, there's, there's no way I can be like that with this guy. Um, you could just tell, you could see the vibe. It was just like, this guy knows his shit and I'd been worded up. He's a millionaire, he's not going to take your shit. So, first thing I do, no little sem pre-game seminar, nothing. All right, I'm like, straight to the club with you, let's go. He's like, oh, no one really speaks to me like that. All right, let's go. And uh, here I am, I'm thinking, in, inside, um, I've got a voice saying to me, you're going to get owned on this boot camp. This guy's going to... This guy's going to just think you suck. He's going he's gonna to see right through you. He's going to think like you're a fake and you suck, right? Hands up if you ever felt the, 
um, people are going to see right through me type thing. Yeah, this is like the, the antidote to the, bo the boldness, right? But chances are people don't even see it. So I kind of faked it. I'm like, come on, let's go, right? The tonality, all that stuff. Off we went straight into the club. And when I hit the club, first thing I did was I was like, all right, I've got to hit up the hottest girl in here straight away. All right, this is what's going to make this guy just, he's going to, I want to make, the, my goal wasn't so much the girl at that time, it was like, I'm going to make this guy's eyes roll into the back of his head. All right, that's, I just wanted this guy to be like, oh, holy shit. All right, so that was my little goal. So I'm walking in, I'm like, bang, straight away, there she is. Over I go. Um, straight in, hey, what's up? I'm Tim. Cool, yeah, vibes, all good. And then he's looking back and he's like, oh, he's going to make me do this now. Looked over, I'm like, yep, now I've got him. Good. So now I can proceed. So the, you get one little moment with a girl, with a guy, with anything to make a first impression. And I feel like the first impression that you need to make as a dude on your, what is it? Oh, yeah. Everyone's, what, what's everyone doing this morning? <laughs> on your what? Quest. All right. On everyone on their quest, the first little toolbox, first little thing in your tools is the whole entering with boldness. Now, I was talking with uh, Brad Branson, who's uh, going to be talking with you guys on Sunday. He's staying at my joint at the moment. And uh, we were laughing. We just hit the gym last night. We're walking back. And he's like, yeah, man, it's like, I feel like a tiger or something now, you know? I need, I need to eat some food. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. That's it, man. Tiger. I'm like, thinking tiger. And I was like, I came up with a little story and a little analogy of like, back, say we were back in like caveman days or whatever. And you know, everyone relates stuff back to like the ancestor past and, you know, being alpha and if a tiger had to come eat you, you know, you'd have to be able to handle that sort of situation. So this little image in my mind came of like an African tribe. And uh, say, say you're in a little tribe and uh, you're a man in this tribe and sure enough, the big ass white fucking tiger comes to eat everyone, Okay. Boldness is the man that kind of laughs at the little tiger, runs over at the tiger, grabs it by the neck, shoves its head in the ground, and then looks at all the other tribes and I'm like, yes, this is, this, I'm handling my shit right here, right? That's boldness, okay? Can you all sort of picture that in your little head? The tiger forcing that shit down, okay? Wrestling it to the ground. That's the sort of shit as dudes that excites us. That's the James Bond stuff. That's why we're all attracted and we're kind of like the mini James Bond stuff is because... That's the stuff that, like, you know, feeds our soul, I guess. So, now, you don't, go, you don't need to go down and chase a tiger or whatever. Right? I'm not saying that. But that's the sort of stuff. Boldness, stuff that scares you, doing that sort of stuff really helps. So, that's number one. Second one, that, uh, second one in your little toolbox of uh, quest is passion, okay? Now, that word gets thrown around all the time. You're like, oh, passion, oh, passion, right? But uh, passion is that, to me, passion is that little tiny voice inside. It's that little, I guess, the, the little one that says you're meant to do more things. It's the one that tells you your calling. It's the one, you know, when you go to bed at night and just before you go to sleep, you sort of dream about what your life would be like. That's the little voice. That's the little voice of passion. It's the little voice inside. And sadly, a lot of guys, I would call them uh, bobs, all right? Let's just call them bobs, for example. So Bob... He wakes up every day and he's like, oh, I've got to go to work in my bank job, whatever it is. And he strolls through his bank job. But in the back of his mind, he has a version of himself that's this like rock star, like going out, partying or like getting a great girl or, you know, chasing down tigers or whatever it is. Hands up if you feel like you've got parallel versions of yourself um, inside. Like there's the one guy who you know that can smash it. There's the one guy that you can step up and take over, and then there's the other guy who's kind of like the real life that you're living. Well, I think everyone has those two versions, and I think the real version is the one inside, usually, and that's the one that we need to bring out. So, with Bob and with passion, okay, like for example, um, who's, who's like seen a cute girl across the room and uh, immediately lit up inside, right? Just like, holy shit, you know, like that little feeling, like that, oh, I need, to, I need to do something about this. That's the passion. That's where it comes from. That's the little voice that we need to listen to. And I'm going to go into uh, some little stories 
regarding that. But the third thing in the toolbox, the third little thing in the toolbox that we need is will, okay, will. All right, so the first two are useless without will and being able to exert your will. So will as a dude is being able to sit there for long periods of time, long ass periods of time and get through the work that you need to get done. Or will is like going to the gym six days a week and you're gonna hear from uh, some good speakers on health and nutrition and all that sort of stuff. But that's the third thing, will, being able to do that. Hands up if, if you have a little bit of trouble with focus and discipline and those types of things, sure. So we're going to go for a trip um, just during this speech. We're going to go for a little bit of a trip down, I guess, my quest memory lane. And I'm going to be demonstrating through a few different stories um, those three little elements. Sound cool? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So um, three elements to a quest. All right, let's get back on the quest train for a little bit. All right, so there's three elements to a quest. How, you, like, you might be like, Tim, how do I know? How do I know if I need a quest? How do I know if I'm on a quest? All right, how do I know? Three things, three things. Number one, you're like, how do I know if I'm on a quest? Number one, as we've discussed, it may involve a hot lady, okay? Quest, it may, may involve just a hot chick. Number two, second thing that the quest may involve. The quest may involve money raining from the sky. So you've got money in your bank account to do whatever the hell you want. Right, that's the second thing on the quest that it may involve, like going after coin. And the third thing that's generally involved in any quest that you will ever try and undertake, the third thing is tears, okay, tears, little tears. Not, actually, not just little tears, obnoxious crying and tears and sadness. If your quest is good enough, there will be hurt, okay, if your quest is good enough. For example, the relationships thing, you walk into a club, it's like tough, right, sometimes, like when you're trying to approach or thinking about approaching, it's like, there's some hurt inside. There's definitely some hurt. And this is where, I guess, the tools come in and they help these three things. So let's go through each of these three things and how my little quest started. So my quest began uh, at the ripe old age of, I guess, 18, I would say. And uh, not that good with girls at all. Uh, that's all I was worried about at that stage. Um, not, not generally the most social guy in uh, high school or whatever, not the coolest guy. Um, and uh, I somehow managed to get this girlfriend, okay? She was in my karate class. I was into karate. I oh, know, that's, an, that's another story. <laughs> um, somehow managed to get this girl in my karate class. So um, the thing about this girl is what, was she was not very attractive. She was actually, you would say, obese. And, uh, yeah, just not, just not very smart, just totally like the opposite of what you would want out of a girl at all. So landed this girlfriend. But to me inside, I was like, yay, I have a girlfriend. My life's complete. Hands up if you've had one of those girlfriends before. Okay, it doesn't have to be fat or whatever. But you're like, yay, my life's complete. My life's like the movies. Yay, right? So I got this girl. I was all excited. So I'd bring her flowers all the time. I'd pick her up from work all the time. I'd drive across borders all the time, pick her up. Um, I would do absolutely anything. I'd text six, seven times a day, love you, baby, all that sort of stuff, doing that flat out, all right? Then, uh, so this went on for a good few months, maybe had sex three or four times during that period, I thought it was amazing, wow, okay? And uh, then I uh, go around to her house one night, I remember this massively, it left a huge scar, um, went around to her house one night and uh, knock on the door and her dad's like, oh no, uh, she's at the party. What, didn't you know that she was going to the party? I said, no, I didn't know anything about party. Anyway, and he's like, yeah, it's a few doors down. I'm like, okay, party, right. This is, you know, I got that sinking feeling in my stomach because my special flower didn't tell me about the party, all right. So off I walk down to this party and I go down the side, I hear the music blaring outside and I hear it pummy. Walk around, I look, and there she is on like this, like, lie back thing near the pool, making out with some dude. And I'm like, there's, you know, the sinking feeling of doom, massively. Hands up who's had like a sinking feeling of doom experience with a chick, yeah. Right, so the sinking feeling of doom. And then, so instead of, you know, I didn't know how to do this at this stage, attacking the tiger or whatever, I, I kind of, I kind of just 
sank and then turned around and like it was it was serious like a movie you know the sad music playing and uh went home and that's when the tears come in right there was tears there was sadness i'm an 18 year old man for god's sake and this is what's happening this girl's like ripping in pieces fat unattractive not very special girl that i'd fallen in love with or i'd chosen to fall in love with so that was um, i remember distinctly sitting at my desk at that point and i'm thinking this is the lowest possible place I could be at right now. My fat, unattractive girlfriend has just cheated on me. Who I was supposed to marry and uh, who I was supposed to like cherish forever. And my life's over. Rock bottom. Who's had rock bottom? Okay. So the key to the quest and the first ever thing that when I know a quest is coming, all right, in my own personal life, when I've, had, I've been on a series of quests, and guess what, as dudes, the quests never end. Okay, they never ever end. The first time I know when I'm about to step on a quest is when rock bottom hits. And there's no like, no consoling with the friends. There's no like, it's, it's a place of solitude where you're just like alone with your tears and sadness and just like, I fucking suck right now. All right? And uh, that's when I know that automatically precedes a quest. So what do I do on this, this little quest? There's a little fire of passion that like ignites inside. There's like a layer of sadness and a little fire of passion, right, that ignites inside. I'm like, I know what I need to do. I need to go on the internet and write how to pick up chicks into Google. So that's exactly what I did. I went over to the computer, how to pick up girls. And that led me to a whole heap of stuff that was like, it's okay to kind of suck with chicks. And uh, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do completely opposite to what <laughs> I was doing that will help you all in that way. And uh, I decided that moment, I decided I'm not just going to, uh, you know, dabble in this little, you know, getting good with girls thing. I'm going to be the best at this shit. Fuck it. I'm going to step up and I'm going to be the best at it. So then I proceeded to run around in the local nightclubs in my home with uh, stories that actually at that stage, um, it's way back in the day, this is 10 years ago now, way back in the day when people used to post in forums, they were called field reports. Um, they'd post like, uh, you know, pretty much it looked like lightning bolts were shooting out their ass in the nightclub and like all this cool, amazing shit was happening. Like eight girls with me. Yeah, it was awesome. All I did was say hello and eight girls came out. I was like, oh, holy shit. That's, I need to do what this guy's doing, right? So I was like believing so much in this stuff. So it was like, okay, this, this, if this little guy can do it, and funnily enough, he was probably just sitting there on his computer like, yeah, I was with eight girls. I'd, I'd walk out and I'd be like, okay, let's try the eight girl trick, whatever that guy did, all right? And I was using these hopeless openers and uh, just disaster, but tearing it up. But inside, I felt like I was kicking ass because, you know, I'd hit rock bottom. This is better than fat cheating girlfriend of doom. At least I'm talking to like these hot girls. That's better than what, what the previous shit was. So I started to feel like I was the best, like I was the lord of like pick up glory, right? So completely delusional, completely weird. My family's like, what the fuck's happening? He's wearing pink shirts. <laughs> He's wearing pink shirts. You know, like, what the fuck? My dad thought I was homosexual. Um, so, yeah, proceeded to do that. And then, so this guy kept popping up, this Tyler Durden guy, right? And he's like, oh, this guy, yeah. You know, more shit, like I'm blasting out the club. I was like, yeah, this guy's all right. Then he started his own little, you know, coaching thing. I was like, all right. So at that moment, I kind of had to... Again, same as like, you know, guy with eight girls, you had, I had to kind of like, in my mind, do what's called suspending disbelief, all right? So you'll hear a lot of theory, you'll hear a lot of stuff, I might say it or whatever, and there's a, there's a place in your mind that goes, this guy's full of fucking shit. And there's a place in your mind, like, you'll hear some theory, and there's a place in your mind like, this, what I'm reading right now, this is bullshit, right? There's a place in that. But you have to suspend that little voice in order to open up that, I guess, that passion and that energy and all that sort of stuff. So I was a delusional little pink-shirted man. And I flew up to Sydney because they came out to Sydney to do this little conference. So I was like, all right, I need to meet this Tyler Durden character and uh, see what he's all about. So I flew up there and um, funnily enough, um, I hope the guys that were at that course aren't watching this video later on, but I walk in and I'm like, I look around and it's not like the room today. But back in the day, pickup was some creepy ass shit. Okay, it was it was like, it was some there were some characters in that shit, man. Like characters, okay, like sparkly vest man walking. 
Like, wow, this is interesting. <laughs> Sparkly vest man, real greasy, creepy hair man. There was like some really weird characters going on at this conference. I was like, well, I may be in with a shoddy. I think I might be able to handle myself with all these like guys. Like they're complete opposite of, yeah, like what I would say good with men because look good with women because I had it. I had a vision. I had a vision in my head of what like a pickup master would look like, and all of the guys had nothing <laughs> looked nothing like that. So anyway. I meet this Tyler guy and he seems kind of cool, he's, he's rad. And um, the biggest thing I noticed about this guy, Tyler, his name's Owen and you guys all probably know of this guy from uh, Real Social Dynamics. First thing I noticed about him is, was point number one, he was bold as shit, okay? Like we went out to the nightclub and uh, we walk in together and the first thing, he's like a man, on, like a Terminator, that's what he is, he's a Terminator. And walk in, he's like, boom, over these huge bouncer guys, like massive bouncer dudes, and just like a cute little girl sitting there. And he kneels down in front of her. He's like, hey, what's going on? And like some 80s dog's opener or something comes out of his mouth. He's like, oh, my God. We all get kicked out. But, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but to me, I'm like, this guy's amazing. This is, the, this is amazing. This is the shit. All right. So. I, that weekend, I, I ran around with like a whole bunch of pickup, creepy man actually, a bunch of creepy dudes. I ran around and uh, I was probably the less creepy of them all. Still had my pink shirt on, but still probably the less creepy. So this got me noticed um, because I, I distinctly remember this one time, uh, Tyler and I walk out and um, just on the street, I grabbed this girl hey, what's up? Yeah, what's going on? Uh, didn't worry about all the openers and bullshit. And then just went, oh, I might be able to go for the kiss now. Boom, kiss around to like 30 seconds or something like that. So a couple of days later, I get an email. Hey, man, we're thinking about doing this RSD thing in Australia and wondering if you want to uh, be a part of it. And uh, so I just exploded. I was like, whoa, this is the shit. This is like going to be the best. It's going to be the best. This is my career. I'm going to be awesome. So I uh, flew, flew out to Hollywood. Oh, I had to explain it to mum and dad. Okay, uh, that was tough. Dad still thinks I'm massively homosexual at that point, right? And uh, flew out and then uh, proceeded to fly around the world and teach guys how to get better at it. And um, again, in the early stages, I actually, deep down, I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. Like, honestly, I read all the books. I had all the stuff. I was going out. I was trying to pick up chicks, but then I found myself in a position where I was coaching other guys and I still felt like I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. All right? So a little message for you guys is that that little boldness, passion, and will that I had, like all those three powers kind of combined to make all that stuff happen, even though probably I, was, I probably sucked, right? I probably wasn't the greatest, okay? But all those things combined to make it happen. So... Distinct, distinct, um, yeah, the, the, it's, it really uh, resonated with me that, okay, like people would sit back and listen if you were just bold and went after it. Who's approached um, a girl in a club surrounded by a bunch of dudes before? Hands up. Okay. Did it go well? Yes or no? No, no, yes. It's mixed. Okay. Um, generally, the amount of boldness and energy that you bring to that situation predicts how well that's going to go. Uh, last week I was out at a club and uh, walking through with one of my mates who has no idea about pickup, no idea who I was, I was even in pickup, actually doesn't really know what I do or have any idea because he just thinks I've chowed around all day or whatever. So we're walking in the club together, he's like, oh man, oh geez, she's hot, isn't she? Oh, peace, she's surrounded by all those dudes. Oh, yeah, it's a pity, isn't it? So I hand him the drink and he knows not, like knows I've never been in this stuff or whatever. So I hand him the drink, I'm like, yeah, that's a pity, isn't it? I hand him the drink, boom, walk over, dudes out of the way, right, at, like, just boom, dudes out of the way. Hey, what's up, I'm Tim, I had to meet you, what's going on? Like, just this, this little lead here, hey, what's up, I'm Tim, what's going on? And it was like, the boldness of the move, okay, did two things. Number one, it shut down all the guys. And these were big dudes, right? Like, these were jacked steroid men. And there's always those guys at the bar. It's like, fuck, why don't I have those muscles, right? And, uh... So jack dudes are all like, what the fuck is this, right? Like, it just, it, just makes them, it just makes them, like, go back into their head. And it's addictive doing that shit too, by the way. Like, if you do this a couple of times, it's just like, it's as much fun as getting the girl. All the guys, like, crumbling around you. So they're just like, 
it's, and it's like a lean. It's like, oh my God, he's going to take our girl away from us. All right? So they go back in their head and literally it's just a, hey, what's going on? Yeah. And then she, like a moth to a flame. So she's noticing subconsciously the dude's crumbling and uh, then noticing like just this dude like pulling her away. Right? So she's just like leading like, what's going on? Oh, what? What's your name? Right? Like this. So Pulling her, pulling her in, yeah, I'm Tim, cool. Yeah, I just, you know, I just thought you were super cute and we had to meet. She's like, oh my God. Like, and then boom, it all just exploded. Um, but you've got to be wary, okay, because the dudes snap out of the little, um, the little trance that you put them in in the first place, the boldness trance. And it might be 30 seconds, it might be 10 minutes, but they will come out of the trance and come back for the girl. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, anyway, it's not, it's not what you would call solid game because I didn't really deal with the dudes. I was just all over it. Like, but it turns out, one of them, boyfriend. Okay, so still tranced out and literally, I'm getting physical as shit here too. Like, oh my God, if that was my girlfriend, this dude would be obliterated pretty, pretty damn quickly. I, I, don't, I would think so anyway. Maybe not. Maybe if he uses the boldness technique, it's... But uh, anyway, so sure enough, jacked ass man comes, lifts her up, fuck off, gone, right? Girl, gone. My friend is just, holy shit. <laughs> turns, turns, to, turns to the other boys and he's like, that's how you do it, boys. <laughs> like, oh, boys, whatever. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to chase that down. <laughs> I think that one's done. But um, that, was the, that was the one thing that I, I, I really, you know, wanted to... Uh, give to you about that. So I flew around doing this thing, this little RSD thing for uh, a lot of years and recorded a program um, on picking up girls and said what I need to say about the whole thing. And after I did record this program called The Flawless Natural, I thought uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about uh, dating and pick up and all that sort of stuff. And now I want to move on to other things. And for a moment there, the little voice of passion, which I said is really, really important, the little voice of passion died down. I started to feel guilty, okay? Hands up if you've ever felt guilt about, you know, the self-development stuff and, like, getting better and, and improvement and stuff like that. It's good, it's good that you don't. That's cool. I felt a little bit guilty that I'd been flying around the world partying and getting paid to pick up girls. I was, like, I was thinking about my mates back home. I was thinking about, like, my, my family has a big influence on me as well. Like, no matter how much you're like, fuck, it, fuck what my family wants, they still, like, it's your family, right? That's, you know, you still kind of, like, value their opinion and all that sort of stuff. So I'm like, you know, my, you know, my I'd be getting emails off my parents, like, we're getting worried about you. We're, we're you know, what's, what's going on? You're just doing all this weird shit. And <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting up into your 20s now. It's time to start, like, and dad's, like, d dad's pretty much, dad's emails, like, get a job. <laughs> Mum's is, like, this big, long diatribe of, like, you know, we're just worried and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, the soul kind of hurt a little bit. I'm overseas. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm doing this fun stuff. So it's time to get real. It's time to get serious about my life. So I suspended the voice of passion, suspended the voice of like, I should be going after, you know, what that little voice wants. Suspended that and moved back home. And there was this one girl back home that was always kind of on the radar. Um, always like whenever I'd travel and, I, you know, I'd pick up girls in Sweden. Actually, I thought... I was going to bring this one girl home. I thought, this is my wife. She's coming back. We're going to have this beautiful relationship together. Met girls in Sweden, met girls all over the world, Vegas, partying, all that sort of stuff, and been with a lot, a lot of girls all over the world. But there was this one girl that I'd always measure all the girls against. Hands up if you've got to measure it like a barometer girl, right? That you'd measure like, okay, she has to be as hot as this one, right? So this one girl I'd see around town, and uh, she, she was the barometer girl. And uh, anyway, so I was back. And uh, my little voice of passion was gone, but my quest was still there. It was like, I'm going to get Barometer Girl, right? So, funnily enough, I got this uh, little gig DJing, which is cool too. Like, it's a little passion project, but still not kind of on the path. But, you know, okay, I'll do this DJing thing. So, DJ for a while. She'd come into the club. We end up hooking up. And, um, you know, I think all my prayers are answered. I've got the girl of my dreams. And... Uh, 
Funnily enough, it seemed like the story from when I was 18. But uh, anyway, so I've got the girl in my dreams. I'm like, yes, barometer girl. Everything's right in the world. We're going to move to Melbourne. We're going to get our own apartment, blah, blah, blah. So we did that. We moved here to Melbourne, got our own apartment together, moved in together. This is it. We're going to live happily ever after. Mum and dad are happy. Everything's, everything's sweet, right? Two weeks in to moving in together, I start to realise this sucks a bit. I'm like, this routine, mundane, like, life, you know, kind of sucks. By the way, I was broke because I was traveling so much and just flying around and all that sort of stuff. So I was broke and she's like, get a job. You know, like, this is, you know, you suck a bit. (laughs) Get a job or something. I'm like, no, that's not, I don't do job. I don't do work for other people. It just, just doesn't suit my personality. So our relationship started to suffer massively and uh, I end up, you know, two weeks, might have been two months, like I, I, I played it out, but two to three months after moving in together, you know, massive fight. I'm like, fuck you, breaking up, done, right? So I broke up with the beautiful barometer girl who turns out was evil and snappy. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, girl, it, it's funny because girls, you, you see them, you get this like beautiful, like, oh my God, I would cherish her forever, Right? But then you, then you get, get with them and later on you, you meet the evil witch of doom that lives inside. And uh, I don't know, like, and, and I'm telling like, ev- they all have it, I'm sorry, but it's just, there's, it lives inside and whenever, you know, if you don't get a job, it'll come and it'll snap. So, just a little, <laughs> so it snapped and I snapped back and everything snapped. And uh, so I move, I'm, I'm now living on a couch. Like this is, this, is pr- this is post flying around the world. Like all these guys know who you are. You're like this pickup master apparently. And like you've taught thousands of guys and blah, 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 blah. You're, you're supposed to be a champ, but now you're living on a couch and no girls like you. This is great, right? So again, what moment was that? Rock bottom. Okay, I'm like, oh, fuck, right? And that's where it, it clicked again. I was like, it was like, all right. And, and after days, maybe, yeah, like days, maybe a month of being on the couch, the little fire started up again. And I was like, all right, what's my quest this time? What's my quest? All right, so get everyone standing up again, please. <clears throat> just, a, just a signal to the quest, all right? Remember the quest? So it's plant the right foot. And I want to hear the stomp too. They're like, boom, right? And uh, the cocked arm and quest, right? So on three, boom, right? One, two, three. Quest! All right, we'll do one more. One, two, three. Quest! All right, cool. Feel good? Feel a bit more loose? Cool. So, quest, quest number two. I was like, all right, now I need money raining from the sky. I'll be able to get any girl I want if I've got the coin. If I can do what I want, fly where I want, just whatever. Um, I can go, go to the club and get girls, that's fine, but if I've got coin, I'll get, the, I'll get the real girls. I'll get the high status stuff. So, I'm like, all right. Remember the millionaire man I told you about earlier? Millionaire guy that I taught and I was all bold and he was all like the alphaist guy I've ever met and huge and turns out he was into some uh, badass shit back in the day and like, yeah, crazy, crazy. Made millions. Anyway, he, uh, I call him up. I'm like, hey, mate. He's like, hey, what's going on? Like, we got respect because, you know, we've done all the boldness shit. Like, he's like, you know, this guy's all right. Um, and I said, mate, how about... Um, you know, I, I sort of teach you, like, uh, how's the girls going? Actually, that's what I was saying. I was like, how's the girls going? He's like, oh, not so great, you know. Oh, can I run some stuff by? I was like, yeah, sure, run some stuff by me. And uh, we talked about girls, and I gave him some advice and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, hey, uh, so you made a lot of coin, and uh, I'm pretty much broke right now, so how about you uh, show me your ways? Okay, he's like, all right. So we hooked up a Skype call once a week, uh, every every week, and he proceeded to kind of lay it out for me. And I met uh, other guys along the way, and a lot of like very successful dudes in teaching this stuff. And so I started reconnecting with these guys and just asking them about business, how to build businesses, all that sort of thing. So that became my new little quest. And in building businesses, I had to do this little thing called exert a lot of will. All right, um, I was used to flying around, I was used to partying, I was used to doing all this other stuff. Um, just running off the back of, I guess, a natural talent. But now I had to sit down and get some shit handled, all right? So this was quest number two. And this is uh, what led me to build certain businesses. So 
Would you like to uh, learn, if I draw it up here, a little bit about some of the businesses that I created and a little bit about Freedom Business, which is kind of like the new evolution of where I'm at right now? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, excellent. So the first thing this guy told me or taught me in uh, business and uh, all this sort of stuff was how to plan and how to map out a plan that um, was going to lead to success, all right? So the first thing he showed me was this. Um, you basically need, number one, figures first, okay? Figures first. All right, so he told me, all right, how much do you want to make? And I was like, oh, well, let's say 10000 a month. And he's like, all right, cool, 10000 a month. So we put the little 10K at the end, like, so this is our little map. And uh, how long, realistically, do you want to spend building this thing that's going to make you $10,000 a month, all right? And I said, oh, well, I don't know, like six months or something like that. He's like, how about two, all right? So he's always like putting, putting kind of constrained variables on it. So 10K a month in uh, two months. So that was the figures first, all right? And when you do the figures first, the figures, the figures are the figures, right? This is the stuff that's going to show up in bank account. This is, there's no emotion involved in this. This is just like, this is going to show up or it's not, all right? It's going to show up or it's not. So the figures first gives you clarity. It's like, all right, this much in this much time. So then you can start asking yourself better questions like, how the fuck am I going to do that, <laughs> right? <laughs> so... Which is pretty much what I said to him. I'm like, that's cool, you know, but how, how the fuck will I do this? So then we started going back, we started back planning. So if we go, uh, we map out like two months, what's that, eight weeks? So one, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, cool. So we start here, this is where we're at, and, uh, on, and what, what we do is uh, we get our dates, so today, what is it, the 30th of November? So we put the 30th of November here and then two months from there, the date. So pretty much we want this to show up and we will do whatever it takes minus any illegal activity to make that show up, right? So we started talking about it. I was like, okay, cool. First thing we need to do is uh, we need to think about a market that we can go into. Now, his whole philosophy was a kind of like a Richard Branson type philosophy in that him and I had very similar personalities in that we were really good at seeing the big picture and the vision, but really poor at like executing and like getting shit done. Hands up if you kind of feel like that a little bit, right, sometimes, right? So really good at seeing all the pictures of the puzzle, but actually sitting down and grinding out the work is like a different story. And some people are really good executors and some people are really good visionaries. Uh, but he was a visionary, same, same type of personality as me. So the first thing we acknowledged is that we need to uh, enhance our strengths and outsource our weaknesses, okay? So enhancing our strengths are things like, what am I good at? I'm good at like uh, speaking, I'm good at client meetings and like meeting people and all that sort of stuff. I'm good at anything social and all that sort of stuff. But sit me in front of a computer for a day and I want to shoot myself in the face, okay? So like these, I had to go through and had to, we work together and we ask ourselves questions and we went through and we sort of identified my strengths and weaknesses. So I was like, all right, cool, we went through that. And then I was like, okay, if we can outsource, let's look at outsourcing right now. Now, pretty much the way the world works now is that anything can be uh, outsourced. Anything that's repeatable, any process, any, like think about your own job and think about how many repeatable things you do in your own job. A lot of that shit, you can just show someone else how to do and they can follow the script. It sounds awesome, but there's obviously a lot of steps to that, but that's one of the principles. So most things can be outsourced. So I was like, all right, we asked ourselves another question. What sort of, uh, I guess, business could we run that's fully outsourced? Like, I don't have to touch a thing, I don't have to do anything, and this shows up. And uh, so we went through like a list of businesses, and more importantly, we went through who the hell do I want to work with and who the hell do I want to uh, interact with? There's no point in building a business that um, has a bunch of people who you just hate talking to, all right? Because you're not going to be able to build any, any good like sales copy. You're not going to be able to build any good relationships and it's going to seem really fake. So I was like, well, 
I kind of like, uh, I kind of like just, I guess, other businesses and stuff. I like other businesses. I like, you know, seeing what's going on and what other businesses are doing. And I like, I, I guess, producing stuff. I like things like, you know, good graphic design and all that sort of stuff. So we kind of whittled it down and we we're like, why don't we start a iPhone application production business? All right, iPhone apps, you know, all in the news. Everyone's all over it these days, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, all right. So we sort of nailed down. I'd like to work with big companies like here in Melbourne, because remember, I'm broke here in Melbourne. This is where I'm at right now. So I'm like, I'd like to work with massive companies and um, I'd like to provide them with uh, iPhone apps. Simple as that. So that's how we kind of whittled it down, asking ourselves good questions. Who would I like to work with? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, we whittled it down to that. So I was like, all right, so I'm going to build an iPhone application production business and it's going to bring in 10K a month in two months. Sweet as. Let's get to it. So in the planning phase, what we did is this. Week one, what are we going to have to do? So week one, we actually, um, I flew out to his place in Vegas and, uh, you know, one of his many properties, good on him, um, flew out to his place in Vegas and uh, in that week one, that's where we kind of defined all this thing. We defined what I call a one key fan, all right? And a one key fan is a little person there that absolutely loves the shit out of everything that you do. Like, you know, just all the, all the stuff that like, uh, you know, the way you communicate, your blog posts, all that sort of thing, people absolutely, like that company's gonna absolutely love it. So this became, even though this one key fan is just one person, I sort of thought of him as like the CEO of those big businesses. So what is that CEO, what is he looking for? What is he after in uh, like an iPhone application business, for example? So we start with the person, we start with the customer that we're targeting always. And uh, we even get down to the details like, how old are they? Um, what's their daily life look like? What's, what sort of things do they enjoy? All that sort of stuff. We get down to that, defined that, and then came up with our idea. That's how we got, went into our idea generation phase. I'm going really basic here, but that's how we got our idea, and that's an I, by the way, weird ass I. Um, so we got into that. So week two was then all about building. Week two and three, we went to build this thing, okay? We knew we, knew we needed, uh, we'll put a big B there, build weeks. So we knew we needed like some credibility and stuff like that. So we basically needed a website, right? We needed a website. So in this week here, um, this is where we built our website and outsourced a lot of it. He showed me how to use things like Freelancer, Elance, stuff like that, how to target the best people on those websites. Hands up if you've heard of these sites, by the way, and it's like sounding, yeah, from everyone's sort of uh, on the same page. So we found out how to find the best guys. We found out how to, um, you know, get great, um, one, one of the tips actually is to um, hire your designer and your coder separately because they're two totally different skill sets. So we got a really cool designer. And um, one of the big things he taught me in this build phase was uh, competitor analysis. And that is, so I, would just, I was looking at all the iPhone app development companies in Melbourne. So I was Googling the shit out of them, looking at their website and getting an impression and a feeling of how that's, how a one key fan, how a CEO of a business is gonna feel when they land on that site. So one of the cool things that I actually uh, thought of was, you know, I'm pretty good at presenting, um, my voice recording and all that sort of stuff. So in the build week, what we also did is, so we outsourced the website, we outsourced the design based on what our competitors look like. And we had one key, uh, our one key philosophy was always be the best. Right? It's like the enter with boldness thing and attack. It's like, say you see a website that's like the shit. Because you know how you Google anything, one, one website really gets you and you're like, yeah, they're the, they're the bomb. And the other, one, the other one, some of them, you just go, they're rubbish, right? So our whole goal was be the best, right? Be, build the best shit. So build a good, build a good website. I was like, okay, so let's add some of my strengths in here. Let's add you know, a video that has me kind of like talking on it and saying, hey, what's up? You know, it's, you know, get in a good dress shirt and say, hey, what's up? It's an iPhone app company, blah, 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 right? So I did that. We created a really cool little sales video and all that. So we went into the build phase. Then this phase here, um, week one, two, yeah, basically week uh, one, two, three, four, five, week four to six, that was contacting good iPhone app development companies and uh, getting them to... Uh, getting them on board to be our outsourcers. 
So basically the setup was this, us here, uh, Tim, and then like you've got the website, right? And me, I've got like, and then like obviously one key fans and customers see this website. And then uh, I've got my little, what I call a freedom team, okay? So, you know, I've got my developer guy, right? I've got my uh, graphic designer guy, and I've got my iPhone coder guy. So in those weeks, we had to find these guys as well, So which is very easy, and it's free to do on freelance, Elancer, all that sort of stuff. So this is my little freedom team here. And uh, so in those weeks, we basically were just briefing the freedom team. And uh, another point he said to me too is for like, uh, you know, for credibility and things like that, um, it's good to have obviously on your site, um, on your website, a bit of a portfolio. So I looked and I was like, hmm, who do I know that needs a uh, iPhone app? So I started just calling around, just in, the, in my little social circle and group of people that I knew, uh, who would maybe need an iPhone app. And uh, sure enough, there was a couple that did need iPhone apps. So I said, okay, I'll give them to you at developer price, all right, not make any profit, but that would go into my testimonials, okay? So went, did that, built all that, but in doing that, in outsourcing my first projects and in doing them at cost price for free, um, I got to learn all the processes involved. I got to learn where the pitfalls were, I got to learn where the, you know, where stuff wasn't gonna work, um, all that sort of thing. So did that. Got a couple of uh, things on my portfolio. So then in these two weeks, these were spent, um, they're what's called the uh, marketing blitz weeks, okay? So we did uh, a couple of different things. We did uh, PPC, which is uh, pay-per-click advertising through Google. So we did PPC. We also did some direct marketing stuff, and we also, uh, which is like, you know, just sending out some uh, letters. And we also did some uh, same sort of thing, just looking in my social networks here in Melbourne and seeing if people needed them and things like that. So sure enough, um, at the end of week two, and I had this little thing, um, I had this little sheet drawn up in my room. I was like, there's, there's like this 10K at the bottom of it. And I was like, how many apps do I need to sell to get 10K? And uh, it turns out it was only two, right? Two apps. So two apps, 10K. And uh, so I just had a big one and a big two and a big 10K down the bottom and I just wanted to put a cross out of each one, right? And I'd wake up every day and I'd see this one and two, it's like, come on, just like hustle each and every day, right? So anyway, I got a few leads through PPC, had a meeting with a, uh, a it was quite scary actually. Um, I was like, do I wear a suit? Do I, what do I do? Like, um, but anyway, I just went with a button up shirt and just some pants or whatever and walk in and uh, it turns out there's, four uh, people, all the board of directors of this like crazy business and little old me who started this like crazy little business online. Uh, so I sit down, I'm like, hey, what's up guys? Yep, and because one of my strengths is the talking thing, I end up closing out the sale. It was about, um, it's actually probably about six and a half thousand dollars and I probably, I think I made around three and a half profit once we paid all the developers and all that sort of stuff. So after that, I was like hooked, I was addicted. I was like, this is, this is the absolute bomb. So did that and uh, anyway, long story short, after combining all those marketing efforts, uh, we hit the 10K a month in two months thing. So that was basically a very basic, basic, basic overview of one of my very, very first uh, freedom businesses. And I since, you know, for the last four, five years, something like that, I've probably built three or four of these guys um, of various different, like, uh, yeah, various different, like, niches and things like that. Built four or five of these. And the cool thing was we, we ended up having them fully automated in that I've got a bunch of assistants, or I have one now, but I had a bunch of assistants in the Philippines and uh, she basically was being me. So when an order would come in, she'd send the uh, developer what they needed, she'd send the graphic people what they needed, and they'd, then she, like, so she was like a project manager. And uh, we taught her through what's uh, like a screen flow, screen capturing software. It's very easy nowadays. You can, uh, you can just record your computer screen, send it away, that's your job, done. So I uh, won't bore you too much with the details, but that was a very raw version of uh, Freedom Business. And now, um, so I did this, and successful, doing really well, all that sort of stuff. 
Then uh, I guess what happened for me was I got the little fire again and I missed the uh, James Bond men's community, I guess. Like I missed the guys out there. Like I was dealing with corporates and um, some businesses weren't doing the corporate thing. But this iPhone one was a bit of a corporate one. I was dealing with corporates. I was, had a lot of customers online, but I missed the face-to-face. -face. I missed kind of, you know, when I'd fly over and I'd do a couple of RSD teachings just to keep that, you know, passion alive with teaching guys in this very men's personal movement community. So I was like, all right, how can we uh, merge the two here? And I was like, righto, start the Freedom Business blog, all right? So then uh, now what we have is a situation um, I... I don't have my keys on me, but we uh, have this little thing called the Freedom Secret Society. And um, the Freedom Secret Society is a bunch of guys, just similar to us, all over the world, who do uh, build their own little online businesses to fund the life of freedom, fun, and adventure. So if you look at, and, and one of the first things this millionaire guy told me is he was like, what's the lifestyle that you really want? Like, what do you want to wake up and do each day? And for me, it was like lifting weights, picking up girls, partying, you know, that sort of stuff, right? That was it. So it was like, we're building this whole thing just to fuel and fund that, okay? So that's what we did. And uh, it's so exciting now teaching the guys in the little secret society mastermind. And I do it through like little videos and um, all that sort of stuff each week. And, um, you know, we get on phone sessions and we're actually meeting up together. Uh, I, I only open this up maybe once or twice a year. Um, I've done two now. And... Uh, we're doing our first little secret society meetup in Thailand uh, in January, so we're all really excited. There's about 260 people that are currently part of the Freedom Secret Society all over the world. And uh, yeah, a bunch of us are all gonna just party in Thailand and celebrate the adventures. It's cool because, you know, uh, I found out business like this, actually, one of uh, the guys in Norway, Kaj, he started a business like this and, you know, sent me an email the other day. He's like, hey man, just made 10 grand, thank you. And like, that's just like, oh shit, yeah, you know, like that's awesome. So following this type of system and following the stuff that I'm teaching, it's not, um, if you've seen any of that make money online stuff, I never liked that stuff because it was all like, it, was all, it all seemed really scammy to me. This freedom business stuff is about, I guess, building real tangible, valuable products and services to real one key fans and real people. So that's where I guess our little differentiation point is. But um, that's, kind of, that's kind of where I'm at. That's uh, fueling the passion now. That's fueling the uh, freedom, fun and adventure. Um, but I guess to close it out and to, and to finish it off, um, yeah, if you, guys, if you guys don't have a quest or um, you don't have the passion or, or you think about like what area of my life right now, whether it's the you know, the business or whether it's the relationships or whatever, if that fire's not there, um, then, you know, it's really, it's really something you need to sit down and think about. And it's, and it's done in solitude. It's like, what is that little inner voice of passion inside telling me and pulling me towards? So, like myself, the inner voice of passion was pulling me towards uh, the, the relationship side. And then inside, it was like, it was time for change. And it pulled me towards the more... Uh, you know, business and things like that. So it, it'll always pull you in a different direction, your quest. But one thing I do want to say is, uh, guys, I, I applaud each and every one of you and I do see all of you as like a James Bond character um, because I know after teaching guys for 10 years or so um, how tough it can be. And as I say, there'll be tears on the journey, there'll be tears, there'll be struggles, there'll be all that sort of stuff, but it does make it all worth, worthwhile. And uh, I thank you for listening and I applaud your efforts. Uh, as well. So thanks very much. Cheers. Hey Tim, did you want to Let's have Q&A, yeah, for sure. We probably have time for about three. Did you hear any anybody else? No questions, jeez. How do we be a part of this uh, society? Oh yeah. Um, I'm probably going to open up another course in uh, February. Mm -hmm. So uh, I keep it, you know, very uh, so kind of small groups each time. Makes the coaching a lot better. So around February, but if you want more information, I actually do a daily email. So it's like an email each day where I send out, like, here's what I'm up to. Here's a little thought. It's like a quote and a thought for the day. Hands up if any of you guys are on it actually right now. That's cool. Um, so it's at freedombusinessblog.com. So if you go and you subscribe to that little side bit on freedombusinessblog.com, I'll put some updates up. Um, 
Ver yeah, when we do it in February. And there's yeah. networking and all of that um, for like Sydney-based people, or is it all in Melbourne? It's um, it's not all in. It's not just in Melbourne. It's worldwide. Yeah. So okay. yeah, it's it's all over the world. And um, yeah, it was it was it was the course that I needed when I was broken, <laughs> and uh, you know couldn't couldn't get anything done. But yeah. So, and, and you can you guys can shoot me an email too if there's any other questions and stuff later or like a question about courses, shoot me an email, tim at freedombusinessblog.com. More than happy to answer uh, any 21 convention guys and stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Cheers, man. One second, man. Probably should have given myself a plug, hey? Like, yeah. <laughs> just give me this speech. <laughs> uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I wanted to ask, so when you were about to start that business off, yeah. you said you were out of coin. Yeah. Are we talking about flat broke or? We're talking about credit card funding of all this shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, how much credit card funding? Um, well, okay. So that's a good question because the website was probably around, I probably got it at, though, at that time. I don't remember exactly because this is years ago now, but it was probably around $400 max done, completed. It's right. Cheap. Yeah. Yeah, man. Outsourcing is crazy. And then I got all these guys together for free. Right, I'm, I was just telling him, look, I'm going to be bringing you guys orders. Will you be my developer? Blah blah blah, and chatting to them there. It's free. It's free to chat to these people with skills and stuff. Obviously, you don't want to waste their time, but um, if you're starting the business uh, and you, you know, the website gives a lot of credibility, and obviously, website be the best. This is all stuff that you know. There's 30 different points to making your website the best and all that. Like, it's an in-depth process, but yeah, that's. Um, it's, it's very, very cheap. And this is what people don't realize is that, you know, out there, like, this is why jobs are becoming redundant. This is why, uh, you know, people are struggling. The economy's going where it's going. It's because things are shifting and skills are cheap now and you can outsource. What, what about getting credibility with when you're knocking down doors for the big companies? Yeah, the credibility thing's huge. So one of the first things that we do to, to establish credibility is looking uh, within your own little circle. Uh, we call it concentric circles. So the first one is like family and friends. Okay, so family and friends, you think, oh, all friends are friends or whatever. Like, would they need something like this? So they're the ones that you hit up first. But also, you don't hit them up until you've built this amazing looking website yeah. and an amazing looking website that you're proud of. Right, um, Cable here, he's actually a part of the Secret Society Mastermind. I can reveal his identity. But uh, uh, he, uh, his first version of his website, I said, dude, are you uh, proud of this? Like, do you want to show your friends and family this thing and be like proud of this thing that you've built? Which is an, a side benefit of building a business too. Like you can be proud of it. It's like, I did this shit with my own bare hands. It's pretty amazing. Um, so would you be proud? And he's like, oh, and I said, ah, there's the answer. Back to the drawing board, make it the best. So if you're proud of it, yeah, um, that's yeah, that's that's the one thing I'd say. One more question. Let's go. Done. All right. Um, for you, is this just a means to an end? Is this just a way for you to fund your lifestyle? Absolutely, but it's also to have fun while doing it. Like I could not. Like, you mean the freedom business stuff? Yes. Yeah. Uh, specifically? Uh, yes, it is a, a means to fund my lifestyle. Playing golf, traveling, picking up, that sort of shit. Yep, absolutely. But it's also um, something that, like, this iPhone apps, we came to this idea because I enjoy, I enjoy those meetings. I enjoy, um, you know, offering solutions to clients and stuff. And it comes down to a deep level of, the giving that, you, like the giving that you do, like from like a, a place of passion, right? The giving that you do is worth a lot more than any money that you'll ever make in any of those businesses. So when I came to start teaching guys, as I say, it was coming from that place of, I miss this group of people, like you guys, right? In this community, we're all part of this. It's it's kind of a small community of uh, men's movement type guys. It's kind of place I met, miss connecting with them. I'm connecting with a lot of business guys, but. Now I want to connect with those guys and show them that too. So it's, yeah, it's a means to fund the, the lifestyle. Yeah. I think uh, one of the really great points of that is uh, the journal that I just had. I used to get into, um, like originally when I started getting into this freedom business thing, I think a lot of the guys, when they originally get into this freedom business thing, is they've like, uh, you know, they've got the goal, right? They've got the goal of the, uh, you know, 10K in two months or something like that. Yeah. They've got the goal of like funding the lifestyle, making it happen. 
and it's like, I'll just do anything to get there, right? Whatever, I'll just do it. But then when you kind of, as you're going through the process and as you actually get there, you realize uh, you uncover all these other kind of things that you really like. And it's like, well, actually, I really like just helping people get their own yeah. business stuff together. And I really love providing like, you know, good products or good services to people. And I really like... Um, yeah, it becomes really the like, fun. Like yeah. the you build this business and you're like, I really love doing this. <laughs> yeah, so and so in a lot of ways, it's much like the pickup stuff where you kind of get into it because it's like, well, I just want girls, right? I just need girls. I just yeah. want girls. I want, to, I want to get that. But then as you get into it, you start to uncover all these other sides of it where it's like, well, I, I, I want to improve myself in all these other ways. And you start to kind of like realize there's all these different little tangents from it. So in the beginning, it kind of, you'll probably agree, Tim, it yeah. kind of starts off as like, this I want coins to an yeah. end. And then it kind of develops from there and you develop the love from there. Yeah. Good answer, man. Cheers. All right. Thanks heaps, guys. Much appreciated. <laughs>